Hello again, this is Eric Sinrod, your illegal correspondent coming to you from where the law and technology intersect. Sex sells. And nowhere is that more true than on the internet. And on the internet, Playboy has had to take great efforts to try to protect its intellectual property, and specifically its trademarks, such as Playboy or Playmate. And in one very important case, Playboy filed a lawsuit against a lady by the name of Terry Wells relating to her website, terrywells.com, a website that has photographs of scantily clad women and the like. What was the problem? Terry Wells on her website used meta tags. Those are words that you don't see on a website, but they're embedded there to help direct search engines and internet traffic to a website. These particular meta tags were words like Playboy, Playmate, Playmate of the Year, and the like. And Playboy was disturbed by that because it was using their trademarks. In her defense, Terry Wells said, well, listen, I was the 1981 Playboy Playmate of the Year, so I can use those terms. So there was an interesting uh, dispute going on, and ultimately it was resolved by a judge. And in that particular case, the judge ruled that Terry Wells properly was using those trademark names of Playboy in her meta tags because those trademark names accurately described her. Once upon a time, she actually had been the 1981 Playboy Playmate of the Year. Now, if I, on the other hand, used such meta tag trademark names for Playboy in my website, as you can see, uh, I would not have the same defense she did. So there are very many interesting issues that come up in the internet, and the law and technology and the intersection of them are, are fascinating, and we have many issues to deal with as we go forward. Thank you. This is Eric Sinrod signing out. Hello again. This is Eric Sinrod, your illegal correspondent coming to you from where the law and technology intersect. Let's talk domain names, the names of websites that you see on the internet. Those are registered, and oftentimes a registered domain name can infringe upon the trademark of somebody else. Let me give you an example. I represent a company based in England called French Connection United Kingdom. It's a company that sells women's clothing and perfume and the like. The company really took off when it started leveraging uh, its trademark fcuk.com. But what's happened is there have been another, a number of people out there uh, in cyberspace that have been trying to capitalize on the fcuk trademark in their own domain names. And many of these websites are adult-oriented, as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, and the reason they're using fcuk is because they're not able to and they're not allowed to register domain names using the same letters but configured just a little bit differently, if you know what I mean. So it's been our job to go out and police the particular FCUK trademark, and if we see it in a website, uh, in a domain name for a website uh, elsewhere, we write letters and we demand the transfer of that domain name over to French Connection United Kingdom. And most times, the infringing party will capitulate. Once in a while, we meet with resistance, though, and we have to take the matter further, and we can go either to court or to arbitration. And there was one example having to do with the website fcuklifestyle.com. And we took that to arbitration in front of the World Intellectual Property Organization in Switzerland, and we won. And in that case, the arbitration panel held that the registrant did not have valid rights to the FCUK trademark, and in fact showed bad faith because he tried to ransom it earlier over to French Connection United Kingdom. So at the end of the day, we had success, we had victory, and I received an email after the fact from the disappointed registrant who lost his domain name, and he used the letters FCUK in his email to me, but not in the order that I liked, but it showed that we had established our point and we had won. Thank you very much. See you next time in cyberspace. Eric Sinrod, signing out. Hello again. This is Eric Sinrod, your illegal correspondent, coming to you from where the law and technology intersect. In high-tech disputes, it's critically important to find the smoking gun, if you can. Let me give you my best case example of that. I've represented a company called Fundamental Software Inc., based here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Fundamental Software Inc. has gone by that trademark name for over 14 years in connection with its uh, goods and services. No problem, right? Well, after 14 years, out of nowhere came a company based in Colorado. That company came to the Bay Area and at a trade show announced it was going to do business in the same area, and its name was, you guessed it, Fundamental Software Inc. Well, my client couldn't stand idly by, and we sent a letter off to 
counsel for the Colorado company, we said, with all due respect, you're offering similar goods and services, and you're going by the identical name, Fundamental Software Inc. You must get off the name. Pick another name. Well, the response we received was less than heartening. The response was, listen, people in this middleware software space are sophisticated consumers, and even though we're dealing with similar products and services, and even though we're dealing with identically named companies, the consumers can sort it out and they can differentiate between the companies. That was not acceptable. So we filed suit. But before launching off into World War III and full-scale scorched earth litigation, which would cost the clients millions of dollars on both sides, frankly, potentially, we wanted to find a smoking gun that could put an end to the dispute. So we started looking through the client's files, and incredibly, what did we find? The same law firm on the other side representing the Colorado company that said that sophisticated consumers could differentiate between the companies itself was confused. It was sending its legal bills for its Colorado company to our client in California because it was so confused by the identically named companies. Well, we had a field day with that. We wrote them a letter saying, this proves confusion. You must get off the name. The response we received was, you're wrong, but guess what? We're the law firm that's now off the case. Deal with the Colorado company's new law firm. And that law firm immediately settled the case with us. And the Colorado company was renamed, no longer to be called Fundamental Software Inc. This was handled quite rapidly, uh, successfully for the client uh, at minimum expense. The lesson learned is, if there's a smoking gun, go out and find it immediately in high-tech litigation. This is Eric Sinrod, your e-legal correspondent, signing off from cyberspace.